And all this environment used as a slave corridor. Slave was brought from outside Badagui, from Interland. In each market in Badagui, 300 slaves have been sold in a day. So 17,000 slaves sold annually. I was like, hey, you know, I want to go to this one particular area called the Point of No Return. And I wanted to visit this particular area because when I did my ancestry DNA, it told me that majority and percentage was that I was Nigerian. So obviously, most of my ancestors came from Nigeria. The transatlantic slave trade extended right across the West African coast. A fertile stretch of this along Nigeria today was in fact known as the Slave Coast. Did a little bit of research and I realized that the Badagri was the point of where they were taken from to the US. I just want to share my experience of visiting the Badagri. I kind of want to give you guys a little start of my journey. I was in Lagos for the weekend. I was like, hey, I'm going to travel to the Badagri. So we ended up traveling to um, Lagos Island. And then from Lagos Island, we ended up taking a boat. It's a very emotional experience, I would definitely tell you that. We ended up meeting this wonderful tour guide who took us around. Um, and we started out going to the Badagri Museum, which talked about the history of Badagri and um, how slaves became to be and what transpired between them. And it was a very emotional experience. One of the most tragic chapters in human history is the transatlantic slave trade, when at least 12 million enslaved Africans were violently and cruelly uprooted from their homes and sent across the Atlantic Ocean to strange lands. It's thought that as many as 2 million died before they even got there. So in the transatlantic slave trade, Africans were reduced to mere goods, and they could also be used as a form of currency or exchange. What those people experienced should not have happened to them, but unfortunately it did. And so, you know, in those moments, you just, you just wonder what like was going through their heads at their present time. You know, like I, I think that's what bothered me the most when I was like standing at the Atlantic Ocean and just imagining many years ago what these people had experienced. Like, I just couldn't even imagine. I know that I would have made it. There's no possible way mentally that I would have made it. Black was established 1425. 
That is where Badagri was established. And all this environment used as a slave corridor. Slave was brought from outside Badagri, from Interland, like Oyo, Ushuku, Abel Kuta, Ipato, Ondo, different places. And during days of slavery, we have two coasts. We have slave markets in Calabar. The one in the Calabar called Enyong Slave Market, established 1810. So in each market day in Calabar, 100 slaves have been sold in a day. Now here in Badagui, we have Blicated Slave Market, established in 1502. In each market day in Badagui, 300 slaves have been sold in a day. So 17,000 slaves sold annually here in Badagui. So any slave under to the white men, they have this change around the neck. So Badagui slave port happened to be the largest slave port in West Africa. And in this experience, they talked about how the slaves were captured and how they had these heavy chains around their necks and how their mouth was like shut closed so they wouldn't be able to eat or drink. Or when it was time for them to eat, um, the slave owners would basically put mush, I call it, into a bin and they all had to stick their heads in to get the mush out to eat. Um, but it was just an awful experience that any human being should not have to experience. And so once they're on the boat, they're chained at the very bottom of the boat, all lined across. Um, obviously, you know, they couldn't use the bathroom, people died, and when the ship was too heavy, they would just throw slaves over alive. A lot of times, they would just sell soul for whiskey. So, you know, maybe you could get 10 slaves for like so many bottles of whiskey. The bottle of whiskey, like this, in Mexico, 10 slaves, 10 people, men. So this time during the days of slave trade. So this is used on children to guide their parents not to disturb their parents while working in the Jokin plantation. They have to join two or three kids together like this. They lock down part lock while their parents busy working on the farm. And this also used for the stubborn slave who refuse to work on the farm. They have to force his hands by force. But his wrist, they remove this knot, hang the person up on the very torture with more hands. Why is two legs will be drangling? Punishment for the stubborn slave. So this is on how to prevent those slaves not to eat or talk to the one another while working on chicken plantation. This is very, very horrible. This was used for three purposes. The first purpose is to put these objects into a fire when it is very red hot. They used to make an here. So if you put up and down, the drawer lifts out very well. They have to lock the panel like this and like that. It's to guide them not to eat or talk to the one another while working on the chicken plantation. The second purpose of using this object, slave. Slave has names, but those white people, they are so callous, they don't allow them to bear their name, they bear the master's name. They have to put these objects in the fire when it is very red hot. They are used to write the name of their masters and their masters' nationality at the back of their slave. So that when they go back to the taking them to, they can't be able to identify them. We know what this guy is now calling tattoo. So the third purpose of using this, any slave trying to run away, or uh, any slave will be on against the white rule against the law. They will use this part to punch his foot, as in his foot will be on top of the fallen tree in the family like this, and then nail it down. So if you watch a movie called The Root, that is Kinder the movie, you will know what I'm talking about. So this is the money spent in those days. Who are you about know, carries in English? Carries will be recognized within ourselves in Africa as money by the white people. So by me here we have drinking water bowl. When the slave arrive from the farm, they feed them with water, they tie their hands about, open their mouth up, and as they prepare down here, they drink like honey mouse. No call. the point of no return. We're currently now here in the Badagrity in Nigeria. Um, so we've got to go on this boat. Um, and basically the point of no return is where the slaves were taken um, over to different countries. So this is just the beginning. You can see the sign over here. Reaching up the journey to unknown destination. So during the slave era, the same way we come down to this island, the same way they also are bringing down here, but they don't use engine boat then. They use paddle boat, Kano, 
to move them down here. But then, the canoe cannot pack them at the same time. They need to bring them in batch by batch. So when the boat or the canoe bring them over here, they march them from the riverside down to this port while the canoe will go for another set of people. After packing them finish, they need to rearrange the chain back to them. The chain will be on the neck, hand, leg. They will pack them out. So they don't form a single file. From here, the journey continues to unknown destination. Nothing like houses on this island then. It's a thick forest where you can find different wild animals then. Many of the slaves die on the way going out, while many of them survive the journey to where they are taking them down to. So some die through wild animals then. You don't have time to bury anyone that died on the way going out. The chain that they put on them is very, very important than the slave. At the middle of the road, we have another stopover where they call spirit attenuation well. Why they use to drink water and lose their memory? Why the last one point of you no know, return? You're welcome. So this is where I call spirit attenuation where. Like what I said before, when they start the journey down to the point of no return, remember they were walking down to a known destination. The first time being here, they think they were in another world. But when they got here, they need to stop them here. So those who already padlock their mouth, they will open the padlock from their mouth so that they can drink from this water. And when they got here and the slave merchant said they want to drink from the water, they will be happy that the slave merchant have human feeling, want to help them. But nothing like help on the way going out. The well also have its own measure on the slave. So when they start drinking this water, they will start losing their memory. They can't able to think or react anymore. So after taking the water finish, the journey continues to the last point, where they call point of no return. This is the final destination stop for all African slaves here at the Badagri. This location is called the point of no return. Thank you.